Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're going to take a look at other patterns of inheritance? In class, we've been focusing on dominant and recessive genes and how they are expressed. We've also been looking at the fact that organisms have just one set of these genes for that trait. And that's really not the case. In fact, most of the time there's something else going on. And that's what we're going to take a look at today are some examples of other patterns of inheritance. So let's get started. The first one is called incomplete dominance. In incomplete dominance, genes are not completely dominant over one another. So in other words, we don't have a dominant and recessive relationship. We have two genes that are not really dominant and they're not really recessive either. When we get them combined, we get a blending of the two. For example, there's a uh, flower called a Japanese four o'clock flower that has a red allele and a white allele. When the red and the white alleles get together, you get a pink flower. So you see, the red's not being fully expressed, the white's not being fully expressed, there's a blending of the two together. So let's do an example of a Punnett square using incomplete dominance. It says we want to cross a red flower with a white flower. And then it's asking for the phenotypic and genotypic ratios. So let's take one parent and separate the two alleles. Take the other parent, separate the two alleles. And we show all the different possible combinations. Now notice I'm using two different letters here. I don't want to use a capital R and a little r because uh, they're, that would show that the little r is recessive and white is not recessive. It is incompletely dominant with one another. But when the R and the W get together, we end up with a pink flower. So the phenotypic ratio in this case is four pinks and nothing else. So we could say it's four to zero, that phenotypic ratio, or we can reduce that to one to zero. The genotypic ratio, well, they're all the same. They're all RW. So in this case, the genotypic ratio is 4 to 0, or we can reduce that to 1 to 0. Let's look at another example. What if we cross two pink flowers? So in this example, we're going to take a pink and a pink. We'll take one parent, separate the two alleles, take the other parent, separate the two alleles, and now we'll show all the different possible combinations. Go ahead and do this in your notes and then answer the following question. The question is, what is the chance of having pink flowers? Of the four possible combinations, two of the four are showing pink. We have a red, a pink, a pink, and a white. So the chance of them having pink flowers is going to be 50 percent. Our next example is similar to incomplete dominance. This is called codominance. Now in this case both alleles are dominant and they're fully dominant which means that they are going to be fully expressed. Now an example here is with these chickens. Black feathers is a dominant trait. White feathers is also a dominant trait. The resulting offspring will have both black and white feathers, which are called urbanette chickens. So you can see in this picture, some of the feathers are black, some of the feathers are white. Right there, but the both of the traits are being fully expressed. So if we were to do this cross, we would cross the black feathered and the white feathered chicken, and of course we can see that all of them would be the ermanette. They're going to have both black and white feathers. All right. So now let's cross those two. It says what are the, it's asking us for the phenotypic and genotypic ratio. So the two ermanette chickens would both be uh, BW with a BW, the, with the, both the black and the white feathers. we get for the phenotypic ratio we have one black feathered chicken, two ermanette or black and white feathered chickens, and one white chicken. The genotypic ratio get one big B big B, 
two, big B, big W, one, big W, big W. So again, the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio would be the same in a codominant trait. Another type is a multiple allele trait. Here, there could be more than just two alleles for a single trait. Up until this point, we've just been talking about it's either a dominant or recessive, or it's codominant or incompletely dominant. But in some traits, there's more than two alleles. An example of this is in human blood types. We have four different types of bloods, A, B, O, and then there's type A, B. Now, this is a result of three different alleles. Not only is this a type of multiple allele trait, but it's also a codominant trait because A is a dominant allele. B is a dominant allele. So if the two of those get together, you have type AB blood. O is a recessive allele. Now of those three alleles, you are only going to get two. You're going to get one from mom, one from dad. So if you have type A blood, you could have two possible genotypes. You could be homozygous dominant, big A, big A, or you could be the heterozygous and uh, be AO, have the dominant A and the recessive O. Both of those will show type A blood. If you have type B blood, well, you could have homozygous dominant or the two dominant Bs, or you could have BO. If you have type O blood, well, we know what your genotype has to be. You're homozygous recessive. You have the two O alleles. And if you're type AB blood, well, again, we know what your genotype is. You would have the A and the B allele. So let's do some examples of this. It says that a married couple has a child. The father is type A, so he's AO. The mother is type B, BO. What is the chance of having a type O child? So let's separate the two alleles for the one parent. Separate, separate the alleles for the other parent. Go ahead and fill out the Punnett square in your notes and then answer the question that follows. So if you said 25% chance, you would have been correct. In fact, there's a 25% chance for any of the blood types. Let's take a look at another example. It says that a mother has twins, and these will be fraternal twins, they'll be different. Uh, mom has type A blood. Baby one has type B blood. Baby two has type AB blood. Then it's asking, what are the genotypes of mother and father? Hmm. All right, so let's think about this. Mom has type A. So that means mom could be this or this. So let's write that down. Dad, what do we know for sure about dad? Well, mom had to have given the A allele for baby two. Dad had to give the allele for type B, a baby with also type B. So dad could be this or this, as so we know right now. Well, let's figure out for sure what mom is. In order for mom to have a type B child, we would know that she would have to be AO, right? Because if dad, let's say dad is type B and he's homozygous dominant for B. Does this result in the two possible outcomes? Certainly. There's a 50% chance of having a type B child and a 50% chance of having a type AB child one of each, which is exactly what they had. All right. But does that mean that dad has to be homozygous dominant? Could dad be heterozygous? Well, let's find out. Let's cross mom again. She's AO. If dad is BO, could they have a child with type AB blood and a child with type B blood? Yes, they could. So in this case, we don't really know for sure what dad is. He could be either one, but we do know for sure what mom is. All right, now, another type of characteristic is what's called an X-linked trait. X-linked traits are traits that are found on the X chromosome. Out of our 46 chromosomes, we have the last set of chromosomes are called the sex chromosomes. They determine gender. These are what's known as the X and the Y chromosome. The big green one in this picture is the X. The uh, small blue one is the Y. What determines gender is which two of these chromosomes do you get? 
So for instance, if you get two X chromosomes, you, that's a female. If you get an X and a Y chromosome, that's a male. So now notice here, these are genes found on the X chromosome. Females have two X chromosomes. Men only have one. So if there is a trait that is found on the X chromosome, oftentimes we might see this gene being expressed in males because they only have one X chromosome. For instance, color blindness. When you think about people who are colorblind, it's almost always males. Certainly there can be some colorblind females, but it's fairly rare. On the other hand, it's fairly common in men. Uh, do you know if you're colorblind? Well, here's a quick little test. Do you see the number 25 on the screen? Hopefully you do. Everybody should. But uh, not everybody can see this number. There's the number 29 on there. How about this one? 45. And this, 56. Ooh, that's a harder one. There's a number six there, and there's a number eight there. All right, so let's do an example of this. It says a woman has a colorblind father. This means that she is a carrier for colorblindness. Now, a few different things that you're going to take note of here. I'm going to use the letter C for colorblindness, but we also have to show the chromosomes. So females are have two X chromosomes. I'm going to use the lowercase c, but I'm going to make that a superscript that shows that that one chromosome has the gene or the allele for color blindness. The first X that's shown there, because there's no C there, it has the normal gene for color vision. And so we don't need to bother showing that, it just makes our Punnett square a little bit harder to see. And of course, XY is male, so she marries a male with normal color vision. What's the chance of having a colorblind child? Well, in this case, we have to take the two chromosomes and separate them. And we'll do the same thing for the male. And then we show all the different possible outcomes. So in this case, we see that there is just a 25% chance of having a colorblind child, and that is this one. Why isn't this child colorblind? Well, because on her X chromosome, her other X chromosome, she has the gene for color vision. And so she has normal color vision. Because males only have one X chromosome, if he gets that one allele for color blindness, he's colorblind. The Y chromosome does not have a gene for color vision on it. This is why men usually are colorblind and not women. In order for a female to be colorblind, she would have to have two alleles for color blindness, whereas guys only need one. But she is a carrier. Notice there's also a chance that they could have a child that doesn't even have this trait. Well, let's take a look at this uh, at another example. So let's kind of remember this. Here we have two parents, both with normal color vision. They run a 25% chance of having a colorblind child. Oh, and before I forget, let's take a look at the two boys. There is a 50% chance that if they have a boy, they'll have a colorblind boy. So our next one says, a woman with normal color vision marries a man who is colorblind. What is the chance of having a colorblind child? So the first example, neither parent was colorblind. This time, dad is colorblind. Go ahead and do the Punnett square and then answer the question as to what's the chance of having a colorblind child. If you said 0%, you were right. None of the kids are colorblind. Now granted, the daughters have the gene for colorblindness, but they themselves are not colorblind, and the boys are not colorblind. So this is kind of an interesting point about X-linked traits. It's always passed from mother to son. So if mom has the gene for colorblindness, she's gonna run the risk of having a child who is colorblind, a boy who is colorblind. If dad is colorblind, and mom isn't, there's no chance of having a colorblind child. But notice, all of the daughters will be carriers for colorblindness. So ladies, if your dad is colorblind, you are carrying the allele for colorblindness and could potentially pass that on to your son. We're gonna be practicing some of these in class. Once you've done a few of them, these get to be very simple types of crosses. And I'll see you in class.